Hi, welcome to another episode of Bill Selleck Talks. My name is Bill Selleck. This is me talking. We got a little bit of a soapbox for me to stand on and talk at you for a little bit. Are you ready? Buckle up. Let's go. My wife shared a post that was actually from 2020 is making the rounds another time. The title of this article, Internet Remembers Teacher Who Spent His Final Hours Grading Students in Hospital. (sighs) All right. Deep breath. Let's break this down. Um, So many of the comments are how dedicated. And and, and yes, um, but this teacher who was um, ended up dying the next day felt such pressure (laughs) to get grades to his students that he spent his last night alive grading. And so I think the the one way you can spin it, which is how a lot of the comments and articles are spinning this, is like, how dedicated. Students are so lucky to have teachers like this. But I can't help wanting to interrupt this very loudly that teacher as martyr is not how we want to play this. I think we need to start setting some boundaries and sticking with them as educators. Now that is completely easier said than done because there's far, far, far too often no backup. If you're out, just your students have a sub, maybe lesson plans, maybe not. If you don't get something graded, they don't get feedback on that. Um, You know, if you don't do this, then that just won't be there. Like there's not backup plans. There are no contingencies really in place for classroom teachers. And this is why far too often teachers are like, I'd rather just go into work than call in sick because it's less work and it's less exhausting, which should say something because teaching is deeply exhausting. Yes. All right. So then what do we do and, and what do we have control over? Well, so let's take just the one step. Maybe we can just solve just kind of one thing today. I need to like get to like, just let me look at a spreadsheet. I'm like looking at the photo from this article. It's just sad. Um, Sick. When I I have a suggestion, Um, I was on a federal grand jury for an entire year and it was on Tuesdays. And so every Monday night I would call in and they would say, yes or no, you need to come in or not come in at 9 p.m. So if I did need to come in, what that would have meant if I just waited to the last minute was like write lesson plans starting at 9 p.m. and then either drive to my school, which was like 20, 30 minutes away, drop them off and drive home 20, 30 minutes back or leave even earlier. And this was in downtown Los Angeles. It was... um. I guess a county, it was a, a federal grand jury. So it was like the county of Los Angeles. So anyone that lived in LA County would come to downtown LA. And so for me, um, this was a while ago. This was when I had um, a Honda Civic Hybrid and you got the carpool lane. Oof. Now we're talking. And so I was able to get downtown in just under an hour, which is kind of a magical thing. Um, I was expecting it to be two or three hours every day and it was not. So what I ended up doing is actually the day before, I would just write lesson plans, leave them on my desk, have them ready to go. Then if I did not get called in, I would just go into work the next day and put them in my desk (laughs) or recycle them or something or whatever, uh, or save them until next week. And so I actually got pretty good at writing lesson plans of like, I might need to use these. And so I think this actually could apply now of like, if you were sick or at this point, with the way the weather is affecting our planet, certainly in California, if it's um, a smoke day, a fire day, a flood day, a rain, something, and you're concerned about your safety for driving to school, I feel like there's there continues to be pressure for teachers to show up for their kids. What I'm encouraging you to do is knock out a lesson plan for maybe every day of the week, five of them, or just one that's generic enough, and just have it ready to go whether it's like literally on your desk every day and just every day you like slide it in your desk or you have it like digitally ready to go. Maybe there's a QR code on the wall and it'll say like scan the QR code for a Google doc that walks you through today's lesson. 
um, there's a lot of ways to do it on paper or digitally, but it seems reasonable and doable to actually just knock out some lesson plans. And they don't have to be like many, many, many pages of plans of like, yesterday we covered this, today we're going to cover that. It can be a generic enough frame. And so you just have to kind of backwards plan, or in this case, I guess, forwards plan enough and get some of these protocols going and routines going in your classroom, which at this point, if you're listening in real time, it's the middle of February right now, you've got all of these things already in place. So it could be just, all right, today we're going to do the uh, edu protocol called thin slides. So grab your device, do thin slides, do a review of yesterday's lesson, or look at what your homework was from yesterday or homework from the day or whatever, like however your kid know where, where you're supposed to be. Um, and then you just go for it, right? Maybe you're connecting it. You know, if, if you don't have something, if, if they're a little bit younger, you want to have like a, a tighter lesson in place. There's so much content that we as teachers need to cover throughout the year. And inevitably you will not have enough time to cover it. So pick one of those things and make that the thing. All right, we're going to talk about like uh, I would imagine most second grade teachers in California don't cover quarter notes and eighth notes when they're doing their music instruction, which is actually standards. Uh, so maybe you find a lesson with that or a video with that or like, a, um, you know, some words where like you have that rhythm um, where it looks like a da, 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 da. What are some words that go like butter, food, butter, food? And now it's eighth, eighth quarter, right? So now like write a poem using like only quarter notes and you have to find words that are like da, 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 or like write a poem with only eighth notes or, and then maybe you're connecting this with math where you're doing an AB pattern if you're in second grade. So it's like two eighths and a quarter, which I guess is an AAB pattern. Da, 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 da. Can you write some words where it's going to be that, right? So then you covered music instruction, you covered language arts instruction. Um, yes, it's going to interrupt kind of whatever your lesson plans were, but what that's going to do if you have that like in your back pocket, well, that won't work because it won't be at school, on your desk as a QR code, as something easily emailable. On those days when you actually are sick and you're like, oh, I don't want to do lesson plans, take the time. The lesson I hope you take away from this article that start all this is we as educators are not martyrs. Your health, your safety is more important. And I think it's time for us just to say, I'm out. I'm sick. We have sick days. Like we literally get paid. Part of our contract, part of our compensation is sick days. You are actually allowed to use them. That is in your contract. That is in all of our contracts. So if you have sick days and you are feeling sick, please use them. Knock out some lesson plans ahead of time so they're just ready to go. So when you're sick, you're just like, look at the QR code to the right of my desk, scan that. Those are my lesson plans. They're ready to go. They are evergreen enough that you're just, you're set. I would also encourage you that if you are sick enough to go to the hospital or the emergency room, please do not bring work for yourself. Take care of yourself, rest, bring a book, bring a device that has a reading on it. Like I don't have paper books. I can bring my Kindle uh, or bring your phone or whatever, but like don't be grading as you're sitting in a hospital bed, please. Like we can, let's, let's make that a line that we draw on the sand as professionals. Can we do that together? I know it's asking a lot. Uh, it's also going to be those things of like, if we continue to say like, here's the line, then some of the bigger systems, particularly in, in much larger school districts will begin to, to change if they're like, oh, we actually need more subs. We actually need better plans for when teachers are out because they're actually using their sick days, um, which is part of their contract. So take care of yourself. If there is a flood, don't drive through it. Turn around, share those awesome plans ahead of time. If you're not feeling well, just take care of yourself in all the things. You know, I was talking with a a teacher, I'm going to wrap this up for you, mostly because I have duty in just a couple minutes. Um, carpool duty. I should specify that. <laughs> uh, and it was like the, oh, you know, like it's, I, I got to, you know, it was like it was pouring rain and we had a meeting after school 
And they were saying like, oh, like, I don't want to drive through this rain. It's going to get worse in the next hour. It's just like, go home. Just go home. You need to be safe. You not being in this meeting with 80 other people will not matter. If you get in a crash because you stayed an hour later and you live up in the mountains, then that will affect all of us, especially you, because you will be the one in the crash. Just go, please go. And it was almost like they needed permission to be like, yeah, yeah, I just need to go. Um, but if a giant storm's coming in and go, leaving now from your school will make you safer, please leave now. If you wake up and it is dangerous enough to drive, just don't drive. Have lesson plans, have your stuff ready to go um, and do that. Can we just, can we do that? I think teachers feel so, even as I'm saying it, like I feel guilty telling you to take care of yourself, which is a wild concept. No, like I should not feel guilty saying, please take care of yourself as an educator. And you as an educator should not feel guilty for taking care of yourself. So do that. Let's commit to that. Stay happy if you can. Stay safe. What did my wife text me this morning? <laughs> Instead of saying, live in the dream. Here's what we need to say when people are like, how you doing? The whore persists. No, the whores. The whores persist, but so do I. So maybe that, maybe, I don't know, not living the dream, but the whores persist, but so do I. Yeah, maybe with that. My name is Bill Sella. This has been me talking.